Okay, so we're, we're back again. Um, and at this point we can actually go through, we just replaced the bulb. And, and so in this particular case now, uh, with a new bulb in, under normal circumstances, you turn number one corresponding to uh, the, the bulb, um, the button in the front. This is, so each of the steps corresponds to a number on the actual diagram. And if you take a look at that, that diagram, uh, what you can see then is step one and two are the same button. Uh, that's just really changing the amount of output to the, um, the bulb. Uh, number Step three is the wavelength. That's the, uh, the bigger knob here. And then uh, the final spanning is done over here on number five. So backing out on the unit again, you'll see. Um, that by increasing the, so you leave it in transmittance mode, which you can read right here, and you can step through the different modes with this button here. Uh, we usually measure like optical densities and absorbance, uh, but when you do this, this actual spanning, you want it to be in here. And as you, I increase the output of the bulb, what I'm doing here is I'm getting to the point where I have zero, uh, zero transmittance. And it can be a little bit touchy, but keep in mind we're doing optical densities here. Typically, we're looking for readings that are close to close to one. Um, so point one isn't that far off. Uh, we're also not warmed up here uh, at the moment. It would be more stable once it's uh, once it is uh, warmed up. Um, at this point is where you would actually change the wavelength uh, with this bulb here. Uh, it can be a little touchy, so you have to, 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 to work with that. We're set at 600, which is sort of typical for uh, E. coli. And uh, when you take this, again, reminding that the direction of the path length inside is the light is coming through from this side and going to the photo tube photo right here. And there's a slot on this side where it's bouncing the light and that slot is going to be where the slot aligns with the light coming through the actual cuvette here. Um, you can put it in the other way but it'll actually measure more dispersion, light scattering than in this proper direction. Um, I also put a little piece of tape on there just so that I could try to idiot proof it uh, for keeping the front in this direction. So placing that in, in here what that does is it actually hits a little lever on the bottom and that lever then actually opens the, uh, the, window, uh, the window. You can see that it oversaturates it and so we need to turn this actually uh, way down in order to get back, I have to forget which direction, way down or up actually for spanning. I thought it was down, so let's go take it the whole way down. Um, and we're trying to get to the point where now we're running through water sample in that cuvette. And that water sample will then give, it should be a transmittance of 100%. All of the light is passing through. Uh, and s I like to check to make sure, especially with this case, um, of a new bulb and we're just burning it in right now. Uh, I take that back out then it should go back down to roughly zero transmittance again and uh, you can see we're, we're essentially there. This um, Putting that back in, checking for the span and Then you actually take, at this point, since I'm interested in measuring absorbance, uh, you can take this and you change the mode then to absorbance. And you can see now the absorbance is essentially 0 0.002. Uh, if I now put a sample into the cuvette here that um, has either cells or a dye or whatever in it, then when I place that inside there, um, it'll now read that absorbance on a scale spanned from 0 to 1 and that 1 centimeter path length. So that's uh, how it functions.